Jeanette McCurdy's mom isn't even the worst villain in her shocking memoir. She's exposing a producer who took advantage of her when she was just a kid on Nickelodeon's iCarly and Sam and Cat with Ariana Grande. We uncovered the disturbing truth about the man she calls the creator. From verbal abuse and massages to making young actors do creepy and inappropriate things in scenes that he wrote and directed himself. We knew something was off. Jeanette claims Nickelodeon offered her $300,000 in hush money. Other Nickelodeon child stars have supported Jeanette, but Ariana's been suspiciously quiet. I was angry. I felt unsupported. Did Dan Schneider really turn Jeanette and Ariana against each other? I can put them in any horrible predicament I choose. I frequently make the mistake of comparing my career to Ariana's. Every time something exciting happens to her, I feel like she robbed me of having that experience myself. I'm pissed at her, jealous of her. Ariana grew up in an incredibly wealthy, idyllic town with a healthy mom. I grew up in a goddamn hoarder house with a cancerous mom who constantly wept about not being able to afford rent and utility bills. When Jeanette rose to fame as a Nickelodeon star on Dan Schneider's show iCarly, it seemed like she was living every kid's dream, but behind the scenes, it was a nightmare. I had always been the homeschooled, kind of weird Mormon kid on the outskirts. You never quite fit in. So to have that form of validation felt really good. And then it very quickly shifted. I would cry and I'd tell my mom, you know, I don't want to do this anymore, but she'd say, well, we need this. And then I'd feel guilty. Why wouldn't her mom let her stop? By the time she was 15, Jeanette was the one paying all of her family's bills, and they depended on her. My family was struggling from the day I was born, so my mom put me in acting when I was six to bring in some additional income. I think my mom saw my career as a way out. I lived for my mom. I completely lived for her. I wanted to do what she wanted. Why did she put her mom before herself? Jeanette's devotion to her mom was so extreme because she'd almost lost her as a kid. My mother was initially diagnosed with breast cancer when I was two years old. It was stage four. It was, it was a really brutal time for our family. My earliest flashes of memories are of a household that was very weighted in tragedy. We all lived in fear of her cancer coming back. And when Jeanette was just 11 years old, her mom should have been protecting her, but she did the opposite. My mom was the person who introduced me to anorexia. I had a lump in my breast and I was scared that it was cancer because of my mom's cancer. And I told her and she said, you don't have breast cancer, you're just developing boobs. I said, well, how can I not develop boobs? I don't want those. And she said, well, there's a thing called calorie restriction. In many ways, your mother tried to keep you a child. Yeah. I think my mom wanted to keep me as controllable uh, as possible. I just thought, well, mom's looking out for me. Mom wants me to not have breasts so that I don't have breast cancer. Mom wants me to be, look young so I can book more roles, so I can support the family and do the thing. On the outside, I was doing a lot of the performing, this happy-go-lucky Nickelodeon kid. But inside, I was hurting. It was painful. I was angry. I felt unsupported. When Jeanette was cast in her own iCarly spinoff, Sam and Cat with Ariana Grande, it only made things worse. My co-star Ariana Grande is a burgeoning pop star who misses work regularly to go sing at award shows, record new songs, and do press for her upcoming album while I stay back and angrily hold down the fork. Then this week, where I was told Ariana would not be here at all and that they would write around her absence this episode by having her character be locked in a box. Are you kidding? They really were being treated differently. Yeah, but that wasn't even Ariana's fault. It was bigger than just her. Jeanette revealed in her book that the creator of her show manipulated her to do things she wasn't comfortable with. He reaches out and places his hand on my knee. I get goosebumps. You're cold, he says, concerned. I don't think that's why I got the goosebumps, but I agree. It's always best to agree with the creator. He pats my shoulders and then the pat turns into a massage. I want to say something, to tell him to stop, but I'm so scared of offending him. Come on, take a sip. No thanks. Come on. I've never had alcohol before, and I'm only 18. Couldn't I get in trouble? The Victoria's kids get drunk together all the time. The iCarly kids are so wholesome. We need to give you guys a little edge. Oh my god. Is that Dan Schneider? Jeanette doesn't name him in her book, but Dan Schneider created both iCarly and Sam and Cat, and Jeanette wasn't the only one who was put in uncomfortable situations on set. Mm, I'm thirsty! Dan tweeted out, would you like to see Victoria Justice pour ketchup all over her feet? I did not feel safe around Dan Schneider. I feel that I always need to be on guard around him, catering to him emotionally. We can see the parallels in how Jeanette tried to please both her mom and the creator. But when her mom's cancer came back, it became too much for her. Jeanette tried to escape from her problems, but they followed her. You ran away to Hawaii with your boyfriend. Can I 
sort of began our relationship very shortly after my mom's recurrence of cancer. Something I am grateful for in that relationship is that I was hearing for the first time how unhealthy my mom was. There were some paparazzi pictures yeah. that somebody had taken of us, and then my mom found those paparazzi pictures. She sent me many scathing emails just telling me exactly how disapproving she was. Dear Nat, I am so disappointed in you. You used to be my perfect little angel, but now you are nothing more than a little, all caps, slut, a uh, floozy, all used up. You caused my cancer to come back. That is disgusting. But as her mom got even worse, Jeanette was still desperate for her approval. Can you tell us about your last conversation with your mom? Her cancer had spread to her brain. She was in a hospice bed that was set up in our living room, and she was really just detached behind the eyes. This thing happens when people are on their deathbed where everybody tries to say something. It's in an attempt to get them to wake up. And I said, Mommy, I'm so skinny right now. Mommy, did you hear me? I said, I'm so skinny right now. I'm finally down to 89 pounds. But Jeanette's big news wasn't enough to wake her mom up. Jeanette McCurdy's mother has passed away after a long battle with cancer. Initially when she died, I was devastated. And then I felt a wisp of relief. And immediately the guilt and the shame kick in of, oh no, I can't feel relief that mom died because mom was my everything. I didn't have an identity without her because she had so vehemently dictated my identity for my entire life. When I first went to therapy, the therapist, I was sharing some stories about my mom and the therapist said, Jeanette, what you're talking about is abuse. And I quit that therapist. I was operating through this lens of my mom wants what's best for me. Accepting that she was abusive would have meant reframing my entire life. and. That felt impossible. And Jeanette's mom wasn't the only trauma she needed to address. Nickelodeon offered you hundreds of thousands of dollars in hush money. You didn't take it. I think that, I think I did something that was really hard to do. I've chosen a path of integrity. And it hasn't always been easy. Following an internal investigation, Nickelodeon stated they'd found no evidence of sexual misconduct from Dan Schneider, although Insider reported that Schneider has admitted to asking for massages from female colleagues. Despite this, the company has ended their working relationship with the producer after 25 years. Why hasn't Ariana spoken out about her time on Nickelodeon? We don't know for sure, but Jeanette's experience shows us how hard it can be to accept that something you lived through was actually abuse. Before you can speak up about it, you have to see it for what it is. I recognized in that moment, oh wow, I'm doing a lot of mental gymnastics here to keep my mom where I wish I could keep could her. Keep her. Yeah. And yeah. I know that if I want to be healthy, I'm going to have to not have her be on that pedestal yeah. anymore. Were you ever able to forgive your mom for the behavior and for, you know, the issues that it caused? I worked toward forgiveness. Oh, God. I worked toward forgiveness for... I worked toward forgiveness for a really long time. And my therapist said to me one day, what if you don't have to work toward forgiveness? And I wept, and I knew that that's what I needed to hear. And as Jeanette faced her pain, she was able to see her relationship with Ariana for what it really was. I was so young at the time, and I think it's really hard to not compare yourself to somebody at that age when you're in an environment around them all the time. So I made that mistake repeatedly. I'm glad to be at a place now where I wouldn't trade positions with somebody. I wish I knew then where I would be now today. I would not have believed it. By recognizing and calling out the abuse she went through, Jeanette made space for others to heal too. Look how many people you're touching and how many people whose lives are, are being changed. Facing the parts of myself that I felt the most shame about, becoming public with those has been really healing for me and transformative. And so I hope people consider that for themselves.